Michael, we run around the uh, last day here of the uh, 2011 Sebring U.S. Sport Aviation Expo, where we've had a, just a great time, especially now that it's finally warming up. Yes. It's been very un-Florida this week. But you've got a unique aircraft. I mean, there's there's a number of aircraft that look like another aircraft down the line and so forth, but you've got something that doesn't look like anything here. Tell us about it. Well, the model that we've got on show here is a Pipistrel Virus SW. Um, terrible names for an aeroplane, but uh, people people remember them. The Pipistrel aircraft are made in Europe in a little country called Slovenia, which is between Austria and Italy. The manufacturer has been making these aircraft since about 1995, with a thousand plus trikes being sold and uh, more than 400 composite aircraft. The Pipistrel aircraft are very, very efficient and that seems to be the core technology around the designs. They want to produce the maximum performance with the least amount of environmental impact and fuel usage. Well, you can see that the folks who designed this aircraft have some glider background and the efficiencies here have to be pretty extreme. What will this do? The aircraft started off basically as a, as a self-launch glider, uh, originally with a Rotax 503 engine. Uh, they progressively got into the Rotax four-strokes. Most people wanted to use the aircraft for touring and the wingspans came down from 50 feet to 40 feet and also down to 32 feet. The example we've got here is actually registered in the experimental category, even though we do make an identical model that's a LSA version. This one is good for 147 knot cruise for under five gallons an hour. It's very high speed, very low fuel consumption, and you can see by its design, it's very similar to a glider, so there's no areas of obvious drag, there's no wing struts and everything is fairly well and it's a, a very unique design. Now this is a 912 powered machine? Correct. They normally come with a Rotax 80 horsepower. This particular one has 100 horsepower and that's why it gets that little bit of extra speed. With the 80 horsepower you get about 141 knots of cruise. For the LSA version we basically dumb the aircraft down, we restrict the throttle movement a little bit and we also choose a different propeller which is not an in-flight adjustable propeller as, as we have on this model on display. Where has this aircraft made its stand previously? As you mentioned, it's more of an international aircraft that's just starting to be seen here more in the, in the U.S. But where is this best known? Um, best known in Europe. There's, there's more than 300 examples flying in Europe. There's a lot in uh, South Africa, South America, Australia, New Zealand. Um, and they've really uh, been a little bit slow to take off into the USA because they originally didn't qualify for the light sport aircraft category. And that sort of restricted sales because we came along about the time that LSA aircraft were first released and everybody wanted LSA. At the time we could only sell into the experimental category which has some restrictions and a lot of customers uh, didn't want to go down that road. But now we have the LSA approvals and acceptance through. We're finding now that orders are, are quite good and we've got sort of 13 aircraft to be delivered between now and June. If you own a Cirrus today or if you are considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft, consider this. Avidine, in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities, has launched the G3R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model, low time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidine Integra Release 9 avionics suite for much less than you may have thought, and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3R9, combining the best airframe, best engine and best avionics for the best value. What kind of person would be attracted to an aircraft with these kind of efficiencies? It, it varies depending on the country. In different countries there seems to be a different type of customer but I find in the USA if the person comes to the airfield he's quite often driving something like a Prius and he's an environmentally friendly customer and he's actually got interested in Pipistrel by their environmental stance. The Pipistrel factory for example is not even hooked into the electricity grid. It's got 200 odd employees and they generate their own power through solar energy. They have geothermal for heating and cooling so the whole building is air conditioned without any electricity at all being used. They're a very responsible and green company. So they have, a, they have a very strong presence in a green environment. The Queen of England has even visited there to see their green technology. You know, everything is, is reused, recycled. There's nothing wasted. There's no discharge to the environment. And, and they carry on that philosophy through their aircraft designs by trying to produce the, the most efficient aircraft with the least amount of pollution as possible. Now, a lot of manufacturers come to an event like this with all kinds of claims and all kinds of numbers and so forth. You've got some proof to your claims in regards to the efficiencies. Talk about uh, the, the, the pedigree of this aircraft. Well, Pipistrel aircraft seem to attract uh, people that, that want to 
uh, achieve different things. So Pipistrel had the first uh, ultralight registered aircraft to circumnavigate the, the globe without any assistance. They've also done a lot of flight challenges. They've won the FAI World Air Games two times. We've entered the NASA competition in 2007 and 2008 for aircraft efficiency and we're fortunate enough to win uh, both of those competitions and uh, we'll be entering again with a very special 75 foot wingspan aircraft in this upcoming NASA competition which is something we're really looking forward to being involved with. Now, on this last challenge as I recall the airplane was pulling something like almost 30 mpg. Yes, and that was that's at, at over 150 miles an hour. If we slow down a little bit to, to probably around 110 knots, our fuel consumption gets up over 50 miles to the gallon. So it's a very, very efficient aircraft at reasonable speeds. The faster you go, you're going to use a little bit more fuel, but 110 knots is not slow by aviation standards, and to get 50 miles per gallon at that speed is, is a, a good achievement. For those who are interested in the aircraft, let's talk a little bit about the construction, uh, the modality of, of how it's built, what's going on with it, the maintenance requirements, and how the aircraft will be supported hereabouts in the U.S. Well, it's primarily carbon fibre, about 95% carbon fibre. There is Kevlar used in the safety cell to provide uh, protection to the occupants. Uh, things like the undercarriage are also fibreglass to give them the flexibility because you made an undercarriage out of carbon and it would break the first time you hit the ground hard. Mm -hmm. It's a mature design, as I say, there's nearly 400 of these been produced. They've got a good track record with reliability. The highest one that I know of ours is 8,000 hours, based in Germany, used in a flying school. It's a, it's a, I think it was 96 or 97 produced, and it's just been going round and around and around. Started off life with a 503 engine, uh, but very quickly uh, put in a 912 when it became available for the aircraft, and they just keep, keep using it for training. The sales and support for the aircraft are handled, we have a, a national system of a distributor in the USA with a number of dealers in specific areas which are, have got a high uh, aviation interest. We have a service centre already established in New Mexico. Uh, we chose New Mexico because it's uncontrolled airspace. Uh, they, they offer sort of, they're central and it, it's got good year-round weather. Where so uh, Moriarty, just out of, just out of, out of Albuquerque. Freedom through control. Cirrus has completely reinvented the personal aircraft and the entire experience of owning a personal aircraft. It's a bold new take on private aviation that we call Cirrus Flying 2.0. You set the schedule. You chart the course. You're in control. Now, will anything else be available through uh, your distributorship uh, besides the Virus coming to the U.S. market? Well, we've already we've already got about 30 Pipistrel aircraft here. A combination of the the Sinus, which is the 50-foot wingspan. Right. Most people that are buying that are using it as a touring motor glider, which still has the ability to soar. It's a 30 to 1 glide ratio. The disadvantage for the U.S. market with the T hangers for that aircraft is that it won't fit into most hangers with the 50-foot wingspan. So we offer two shorter versions of that, which is called the Virus and the Virus SW, and it's a 40-foot wingspan or a 32-foot wingspan. We've recently also reduced removable wing tips for the bigger aircraft for the 50-foot wingspan, and uh, we're at the moment we're engineering to have that to be 36 foot with the wing tips removed, so it'll fit into most most U.S. hangers. And these are all Rotax solutions for the moment? Yes. Um, they actually do a lot of modifications to the product to re re improve reliability. They move the electrics away from the heat sources, because you imagine when the Rotax stops heat, like any engine that comes off, and that can affect the electrics over time. So they re cook it. They'll cook it. So they remove it and put it inside the cockpit, away from harm's way, and that gives the aircraft very, very good reliability. What kind of panel selections are available? Basically anything you want. We have some pre configured panel selections in an effort to try and keep some things the same and keep the price down but the factory is big enough to be doing sort of between 9 and 12 aircraft a month but they're still small enough to be able to handle you know different configurations so the customer if he has a particular preference to a 
to an instrument manufacturer. Um, he, you know, if he wants to go all Garmin, he can. If he wants to go all this, he can, or that, he can. Um, there's no constraints. But in base configuration, you're looking just over $100,000. But that's for a very well-equipped aircraft. That's radio, transponder, GPS. And then you can add all of the extras, the dynons and everything else. Uh, the most expensive one I've seen is probably be about the 140000 and that's with dual dynons, autopilot. They all come with rescue parachutes and a whole heap of other extras to store the aircraft if you need to because something we didn't mention is that the wings can come off in, in only 10 minutes. They're just, it's conventional glider technology so you don't need to uh, have a big airport hangar to uh, put the aircraft in. You can take it apart and put it in the shipping container in 10 to 15 minutes. I certainly like the looks of the full span flap around on there. That looks like that's got some uh motive force behind it. It's very, very efficient and in this aircraft um, the roll rate is very, very quick. It almost competes with some of the aerobatic aircraft in its roll rate Excellent. and and uh, the long wing version is, is slightly slower in roll rate but you're not doing aggressive manoeuvres in that because you're generally soaring. Indeed. Well, one of these days when, uh, when you've got one out here that's flyable you need to give me a call. I've got to try this out. Certainly look forward to that. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate your time. Thank you.